In today's Miami Vice, we finally learn some of Castillo's deepest secrets, and as you might expect, they're both deeply weird and deeply cool. We've got another two-part episode today, Golden Triangle. Part one was written by Joseph Gunn and Maurice Hurley and directed by George Stanford Brown, while part two was written by Hurley and series creator Michael Mann and was directed by David Anspaugh, who'd go on to direct the inspirational sports films Rudy and Hoosiers. At the start of part one, Crockett and Tubbs are trying to bust some dirty cops who've been shaking down sex workers. Crockett dons a flawlessly convincing disguise as a nerd to attract the attentions of a sex worker named Candy. Candy is played by Robin Johnson, who always seemed to be on the cusp of a big breakthrough in the early 80s. You might remember her from her lead role as a punk teenager in Times Square, the cult favorite from 1980. With Candy's help, Crockett and Tubbs pose as hotel security guards who are managing a ring of call girls on the side and take down the dirty cops. This whole plot with Candy is pretty rip-roaring, but it's just the tasty amuse-bouche before the rich, beefy entree that is the main plot of this two-part extravaganza. While Crockett and Tubbs are still undercover as hotel security, they're approached by a felon named Zarbo, who is played by popular voice actor John Snyder, who wants them to break into the hotel vault. Zarbo and his unnamed accomplice steal a bunch of forged immigration papers and visas from the vault, and are then promptly murdered by a masked assailant. Switek and Zito find their mutilated corpses and notice that the accomplice had a tattoo of something written in Thai on his arm. Castillo becomes agitated about the tattoo, and here's where the episode starts to get really good. Just based on the tattoo and the mutilated state of the corpses, he deduces that the burglars were murdered by an assassin working for General Lao Li, a Chinese ex-general living in Thailand who controls most of the opium coming out of the Golden Triangle, which is that area bordered by Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar which at the time the episode aired was still known as Burma. At this point, Tubb says to Crockett, You know something, Sonny? Castillo is strange. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. And we are just now starting to figure that out. So Crockett, Tubbs, and Castillo start questioning recent immigrants from Thailand to find a connection to Lao Li. And long story short, they run into a waiter who turns out to be Lao Li's assassin. Castillo whips out some cool martial arts moves in front of a nonplussed Crockett and Tubbs and beats the crap out of the assassin, who then kills himself by swallowing his tongue. The next day, a messenger delivers a package to Castillo from Lao Li, which contains only a photograph of a beautiful woman arriving at the Miami airport. When Tubbs asks who the woman is, Castillo grimly mentions that she's his wife. On to part two. Crockett and Tubbs drop by Castillo's awesome waterfront home to find out what the heck is going on with their weird boss. Castillo explains that until he received the photograph, he thought his wife was dead. He doesn't want to use the Vice Department as his personal detective agency to find her, but Crockett and Tubbs insist on helping him out. Acting on Castillo's suggestion, Crockett and Tubbs locate Dale Menton, a deeply corrupt and joyously sleazy ex-CIA agent who is now working as General Lao Li's personal security consultant. Menton, who is played by Crime Story star and this is interesting, former jewel thief John Santucci visits Castillo. They have a splendidly acrimonious scene, which culminates with Castillo trying to throttle the life out of Menton while Crockett and Tubbs hold him back. It's revealed that Castillo spent three years undercover in the Golden Triangle with the DEA, trying to take down Lao Li, who was being protected by the CIA and Menton. At one point, Menton set up an ambush that killed all of Castillo's associates, then bombed his home, presumably killing his wife, Mei Ying. However, Menton now reveals that Mei Ying is still alive and has been brought to Miami by Lao Li as a hostage to keep Castillo out of his hair while he moves his heroin operations to the U.S. I realize I'm describing the plot in way too much detail here, like a kid who just saw Star Wars for the first time and is assuming that no one else has ever seen it. But there's a lot of cool stuff going on, and it's hard to decide what to leave out. Castillo meets with General Lao Li, who is played by the legendary Key Luke, who had a very long and distinguished career in film and television. He was the original Kato in the 1940 Green Hornet series, he was Master Poe on Kung Fu, and he was the guy who sold Gizmo to Hoyt Axton in Gremlins. Castillo and Lao Li have a very formal conversation, loaded with polite insults and veiled threats, and then Lao Li tells Castillo where he can find Mei Ying. It turns out Mei Ying, who thought Castillo was dead as well, has remarried and has a young son. Castillo keeps up a brave face while learning all about this, all while looking like a man who is withering and dying on the inside. Mei Ying is played by acclaimed actress Joan Chen, who starred in The Last Emperor, and played Josie Packard on Twin Peaks. Even though Lao Li is holding his wife's life in his hands, Castillo goes after him balls out by going through his family. 
Loudly orders his family members to keep their noses clean while Castillo's on the prowl, but his handsome, lunk-headed Lamborghini-driving grandsons ruin everything by dealing heroin on the sly. The lunk-headed grandsons are played by the late Broadway star Kevin Gray and by Peter Kwong, who played Rain in John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. I'm making a mental note to rewatch that very soon because I haven't seen it in years and years, and I remember it being gonzo and awesome. Vice sets up a sting operation to catch the grandsons with the help of restaurant owner Howie, who is played by James Saito, who played Shredder in the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. There's a great little scene in an episode filled with great little scenes in which Crockett and Tubbs burst in on Menton in his amazing neon-lit home, which is currently filled with champagne, cocaine, and beautiful young men and women in their underwear. On the one hand, Menton is loathsome. On the other hand, he's kind of living the 80s dream. Crockett and Tubbs interrupt the orgy to helpfully point out that Menton will go down on racketeering charges if Lau Lee is busted. As soon as the lunk-headed grandsons are out on bail, Lau Lee takes them to a warehouse and orders his goons to kill them, whereupon Castillo and the gang burst in and arrest everyone in sight. Castillo says farewell to his wife and her new family as they fly off to somewhere safe, and then Crockett and Tubbs take Castillo out for a much-needed drink. There are some downright odd, in a good way, music choices in these two episodes. In part one, we get Dolly Parton's cover of Jerry Lee Lewis's 1957 hit Great Balls of Fire, which plays while Candy tries to hustle up some business at the hotel. In part two, we get the Blues Project's 1966 cover of Donovan's Catch the Wind, which plays while Castillo splashes around in the ocean while daydreaming of Mei Ying and wearing a Speedo. So if you had Edward James Olmos in a Speedo on your bingo card of things you never expected to see, you can go ahead and mark that square off. Poison Ivy, the 1959 hit from the coasters, plays at a strip club while a nurse does a sexy strip tease, and Mr. Lee by the Bobettes from 1957 plays at a drive-in restaurant where the car hops are on roller skates. Miami Vice is at its very best when it teeters on that line between the everyday and a level of exoticism that borders on the surreal, and these episodes operate right in that zone. They transform Castillo into a near-legendary figure, complete with a tragic past, an array of mortal foes, and a smattering of near-supernatural abilities. Because of that, and because of a knockout performance by Edward James Olmos and a slew of outstanding guest stars, I'm thrilled to announce that this is our first Five Flamingo episode. Miami Vice's hot streak will continue through next time, in which we have another iconic episode. Glenn Fry will join Crockett and Tubbs on a dangerous undercover assignment in Columbia, and they'll all come down with a nasty case of smuggler's blues. This was a long one, so thank you for hanging in there with me. Please hit subscribe or follow me on Twitter to get your fix of all things Miami Vice, and I will see you later. Goodbye.